after searching YouTube, I have found thousands of tutorials on three-point lighting or getting that filmic look, but I haven't found a single video on how to build a sodium vapor lamp. So here it is. Hi, I'm James Powers, freelance DP and gaffer. Today we are going to build a low pressure sodium vapor lamp for about $130. This is a very specific and incredibly unique light because it is monochromatic. It only outputs light in the yellow wavelength spectrum because science. In the filmmaking world, occasionally a director or a DP will request a sodium look or a street look. Rather than just gelling a lamp yellow or orange, more often than not, I show them a sodium vapor lamp and they love it and use it. Because this light looks good, the fixture could work as a practical light, and it's the real deal. You can't fake it because it's an actual low pressure sodium vapor lamp. Before we get started, you'll need parts. So here's a part list, or what my accountant now tells me to refer to as a tax write off. Whip pan. A fluorescent light fixture and utility knife. Whip pan. A 90 watt low pressure sodium vapor bulb. Whip pan. Socket adapter and base. Another whip pan. An electronic ballast. Whip pan. Toggle switch, some scrap metal, and a baby pin adapter. Too many whip pans. 12 gauge wire for the power cord. Whip pan. Some hookup wire and an Edison plug. Whip pan. Clamp connector for holding our wire. Another whip pan. A Dremel with a cutting tool. Whip pan. Tape measure, drill bits, and screws. So many whip pans. A drill. Whip pan. Electrical tape and cap connectors. Whip pan. Loctite. Gratuitous whip pan. Something called pipe strap. Another whip pan. A set of vice pliers, file, and channel locks. Faster whip pan. If you can't find that other socket, you can make your own with a 90 degree bracket and a socket base. All of these parts are in the description below with links. Whip pan complete. Let's take a look at this wiring diagram before we begin our build. The electrical path will travel down the black wire into the toggle switch, into our ballast, from the ballast to the red leads, into the bulb, to the yellow lead, back to the ballast, then the white neutral lead to the neutral lead on our power cord. I found this awesome fluorescent fixture on eBay. When you're on the hunt for a fixture, try to find anything that's two feet in length and uses a T8 fluorescent bulb. This thing is gonna be perfect for creating and housing our sodium vapor lamp. To start, you're gonna to have to gut and remove all of the old fluorescent lamp parts. Some of the parts could be repurposed. To make it easy to follow, I went ahead and removed my power cord already. To start, you're gonna remove some fluorescent lamp holders, unscrew some panels, and remove the magnetic ballast. Under this main panel is where we will be attaching our power cord, toggle switch, baby pin adapter, and electronic ballast. Let's build a power cable. To start, let's attach the male end of the Edison plug. To remove the insulation, gently roll the utility knife around the wire. Then violently bend, twist, and pull the insulation. From the white, black, and green wire, we're going to remove about a half inch of insulation. Trim the paper insulation. Unscrew the clamp from the back of the plug. On the face of the plug, you'll see three screws. We're going to separate the face of the plug from the boot. Slide the plug boot down the cable. We're going to connect the green ground wire to the green screw. Attach the black live wire to the brass screw and connect the white neutral wire to the silver screw. Align the boot plug to the face of the terminal. Connect the three screws on the face of the terminal. Align the two halves of the cable clamp to the boot plug and screw down the cable clamp. Like professionals, we're gonna secure the other end of our power cord with a 3 8 cable clamp. Most of these fixtures have an area where you could punch out either a 3 8 or a half inch hole. If your fixture doesn't already have a half inch opening, you're gonna have to drill one. Remove the locking nut. Insert your cable clamp. Attach the locking nut to the back of your cable clamp. Locate your power cord and thread it through the cable connector. The other end of your power cord has three wires. Go ahead and strip them if you haven't already. On this build, I'll be attaching the stock power cord that came with my fixture. Now let's attach our ballast to the right of the power cord. To keep your wiring clean, face the ballast with the black and white leads toward your power cable. To secure the ballast, I'm using 3 8 inch screws. These are number 632 round head Phillips screws. When working with the number 6 screw, I've noticed a 9 64th drill bit works best. After you align and mark your ballast, go ahead and drill two holes. To really hold everything in place, add some Loctite to the threads before attaching the nut. 
twist your ground wires together and attach a connection cap. If your fixture doesn't have a ground wire, take the ground wire from your power lead and connect it to any metal part of the housing. This is known as grounding. Connect the two white wires and twist on a connection cap. Twist, 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 twist. And tape your caps. Before connecting our black leads to the switch, let's install our baby pin adapter. Our lamp is gonna have a bit of weight to it, so I'm gonna reinforce the baby pin adapter by putting a piece of scrap metal between the 3 8 bolt and the baby pin adapter. Put the 3 8 bolt in the middle of the plate and mark the center. We're gonna put four holes on the corner and one in the center for the 3 8 bolt. Here's a hot tip for working with metal. Before drilling, make a small dimple on your mark by taking a Phillips head screwdriver and hitting it with a hammer. This prevents the drill bit from wandering from the mark. For a 3 8 bolt, we're gonna use a half inch drill bit to create a half inch hole. After becoming increasingly frustrated that you do not have the right workbench, grab some electrical tape to help support your metal bracket. After losing patience with your electrical tape, grab your bracket with vice pliers. The vice pliers are gonna help your bracket from violently spinning once you create your hole. After drilling, your bracket's gonna have some very sharp edges. File those edges with a metal file. This way your bracket sits flat when you attach it to the lamp. Magic! Now with this smaller drill bit, repeat this process in each corner of the bracket. I used a 9 64th drill bit for our 632 screws. Now you could mark, punch, and drill the remaining holes. Remember to file to keep everything smooth. Attach the remaining number six nuts and bolts. After you mount your plate with nuts and bolts, it's easier to drill your center hole. For our baby pin adapter, we're gonna switch to our half inch drill bit. I went out of order when mounting my plate, after you drill your hole, attach the bottom two bolts. Add Loctite. Remember to file to keep everything smooth. Let's keep everything in place with Loctite. Insert your bolt and spin on your baby pin adapter. And use channel locks to tighten everything up. Hey, remember that toggle switch from before? It is now time to install. So we could turn our light on and off. Before connecting our black leads, let's drill and mount our toggle switch. Use a half inch drill bit. Remove the locking nut and labeled on off plate. Insert the toggle switch. Align the labeled on off plate and attach your locking nut. Use some channel locks for the last few turns. From your power cord, connect the black wire to one of the toggle switch's wires. Twist on some caps. Connect the other black wire from the toggle switch to the black lead from the ballast. And twist on those orange bad boys. And wrap in tape. If you can't find this socket adapter, here's how to create one from scratch. Here's what you'll need to build an alternate socket base. Two quarter 20 wing nuts, two quarter 20 nylon nuts, a 90 degree bracket, and a socket base. Creating this adapter is incredibly straightforward. You're going to attach the socket base to the 90 degree bracket with two of these wing nuts. To make room for the wing nut bolts, use a quarter 20 drill bit and drill out both holes on the socket cleat. Mark, punch, drill, and file your hole so you could mount your wing nut. To feed wire to the terminals, drill a 5 16 hole in the bottom of your bracket. And file. We're gonna skip ahead to wiring. After drilling a hole in the panel, feed the red and yellow wires through and attach the wires to the terminal. It doesn't matter which terminal you attach to as long as they're separate. And finally, to get this adapter mounted to your light fixture, use two of the number 632 screws to drill and mount this adapter. And now back to the regular socket. Before we could mount our socket base, we need to align and mark our bulb. Attach the B22 socket adapter to the bulb. The adapters I found on Amazon were a little too snug. So I had to use a Dremel tool to remove some material here on both sides to get the bulb to fit. You could also use a power drill to remove some of this material. After you attach your adapter, now screw on the socket base with the wire leads. Reposition your panel so you could mark it. Your socket base adapter will have a mounting nut. Unscrew the mounting nut. Try your hardest not to get Sharpie marker on your hand when you mark and drill a hole for your mounting nut. To drill this hole, I'm using a 5 16th drill bit. Remember to file to keep everything smooth. Insert the brass mounting nut and thread the wire leads through the brass mounting nut. Patiently shove through these wires. 
Using your fingers, screw on the brass mounting nut and finish securing using pliers or channel locks. After we reinstall our panel, let's go ahead and test the mount by installing the bulb. Everything checks out and now we can move on to the next step and that is securing the far end of our bulb. We will be securing our bulb with a loop of pipe strap. We're gonna measure a length by unspooling a little bit of pipe strap. To cut the strap, you could grab it with pliers and move it back and forth until it breaks. Mark the width of the strap. Mmm, that warm shower of sparks feels wonderful. Use a Dremel with a cutting tool to create two slots. Feed the strap through the slot. To cut the pipe strap, you could either use your Dremel tool or pliers and just move the metal back and forth. We're gonna mount our pipe strap by marking, drilling, and securing using our number 632 screws. To finish wiring the ballast, we are going to cut the long red wire. You will now have four short red wires coming out of the ballast. Combine the long red wire with two of the red wires from the ballast. It doesn't matter which ones. Go ahead and strip and twist all three of these red wires together and cap it off. And tape them. Grab the black and white wires coming from our socket base adapter and strip both ends. Let's twist together the white and yellow leads and tape them. It doesn't matter which order you connect these, but let's connect the red wire to the black wire. Go ahead and cap and tape them. Tape up the remaining two exposed red wires. Cover up that mess with the panel. Screw in the bolts for the cover. Click in your 90 watt light bulb. Install the dust cover. And now you are ready to rock and roll. One thing to note about this light is you can't just click it on instantly. It takes about 10 minutes for this light to come to full temperature where you get that monochromatic look. After building a few of these lights, I've noticed I'll include stuff in the parts list that I don't use for each build. One thing I've noticed was hookup wire. Um, it really just depends on the fixture, but it's a good thing to have. The sodium lamp is incredibly bright. We're working with a 90 watt bulb and at a distance of three feet, I was able to measure about 150 foot candles. Um, that translates to about F16. If you don't know what that is, that, that's, that's really bright. You're, you have to stop your lens down almost all the way to get a proper exposure. And there you have it. That's how you build a low pressure sodium vapor lamp. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to like or subscribe. Thanks. You wait for the camera? I got your feet. <laughs> like, yep, yep. He wants a bounce card. Yeah, he does. Okay. Get out of the way. There's no room here for anything. It's a little tight. Kind of snug. Ballas. Ooh, this. James, this is a bad idea. Does not have sandbags. He grabs the one light that's kind of the most dangerous.